top 10 treasures that remained lost. History is filled with spectacular treasures and equally amazing stories. From the most common Yamashita's treasures to a surprising treasure found in Bermuda but was later lost too. There are amazing things in history that up until this day are nowhere to be found. Hi everyone, I'm Jane Lee and welcome back to the Unlimited Tens channel. Today, we are counting down our top picks for the top 10 treasures that remained lost. For this list, we will be looking at treasures that treasure hunters and archaeologists alike have tried to find but seem unsuccessful in doing so and treasures that have been found but were stolen in or during transit to a museum. So, if you are ready for another ride in history, just sit back and enjoy our list. At number 10, Da Vinci Muro. You might have heard a lot of things about Leonardo da Vinci. Your history class might have mentioned a piece of information or two about him. You might also have known about the Mona Lisa, which is one of the da Vinci's famous masterpieces. But for today, for this list, we will be talking about another of Leonardo da Vinci's work that was known to be sought after by many but remained unseen, the lost mural of da Vinci. In 1505, Da Vinci painted a mural at Palazzo Vecchio showing the 1440 victory of the Italian League over Milan in the Battle of Anghiari. When Palazzo Vecchio was remodeled by an architect and the painter Giorgio Vasari in 1563, Da Vinci's work disappeared. However, in 2012, a team of art experts claimed that they found pieces of evidence that would prove that Da Vinci's mural was not lost, but was simply painted over by Giorgio Vasari during the renovation. The results were not confirmed though and were put on indefinite hold in September of the same year. At number 9, Menorah from Second Temple Jerusalem during the war in 70 AD received a critical blow in the hopes of trying to free Israel from the Roman rule. Titus, who soon became the Roman emperor, led the Roman army to fight against the rebels of Jerusalem. Jerusalem received a critical blow from the war. Even the second temple was destroyed. I guess war and looting come together always, since after the war, the Romans carried the treasures back to Rome including the temple's menorah. The menorah is akin to a candle stand with six branches. Josephus recorded the fate of the menorah used in the second temple. He stated that the menorah was carried by the Roman soldiers and was brought to Rome. The Arch of Titus that is built in Rome includes a sculpted scene of the menorah being carried to Rome. The menorah was shown as a massive object carried at the back of the soldiers, however, it wasn't found in Rome. Some people have speculated that the soldiers might have placed it somewhere in Rome. It's just waiting to be found. At number 8, Copper Scroll Treasures The Dead Sea Scrolls were found in the Qumran Caves in the Judean Desert. The most known features of the scroll are the texts that are engraved on the copper sheets, hence the name Copper Scrolls. What is more interesting about the scrolls, though, is that it contains information about a huge hidden treasure. Today, the scroll can be found in the museum in Jordan. What remained unseen or unfound are the treasures that were stated in the scrolls. The scrolls were written at the time of the Jewish-Roman War. When the Roman army won the war and destroyed Jerusalem including the Second Temple, which was a very important site for Jewish people at that time, the Roman army also took all the treasures in the temple. There were debates among scholars concerning the treasures. Others have mentioned that the treasures mentioned in the scrolls are maybe the ones that were taken by the Roman army after the war. While others have mentioned that since the treasures mentioned in the scroll is so vast, it could be possible that most of it are just legends. Who knows, maybe all treasures were taken by the Romans or maybe they need to decipher the text in the scroll a little deeper this time to figure out clues that might lead to finally unearthing of the treasures. That would be the best discovery in the world. At number 7, Isabella Stewart Gardner's Museum's Stolen Art Being born in a rich family in New York City in 1840, Isabella Stewart Gardner, growing up, was able to enjoy a lot of traveling. In her many travels, the one that she did in Milan, Italy, had a deep influence on her. 
it gave her an inspiration to one day build a house to be filled with her art collection and antiques. When Miss Gardner died on July 17, 1924, her house was fully converted to a museum. She was living on the topmost floor of her house up until she died while living in the bottom area as a museum. On the 18th of March, 1990, two thieves dressed as police officers broke into Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum and stole 13 works of art valued at about $500 million in total. The lost paintings include five works by the French artist Edgar Degas and three works by the Dutch painter Rembrandt. The identity of the thieves remained unknown despite a $10 million reward. The thieves could have died by now, but the paintings are not yet found. Even though the missing arts are high-priced pieces, it would be very difficult to sell them because a buyer would be able to know if it's real or was stolen. A buyer who buys a stolen item might just face charges themselves. At number 6, Peking Man. The Peking Man, or now known also as Beijing Man, is scientifically known as Homo erectus pekinensis is also an example of Homo erectus. In 1921, John Gunnar Andersen, a Swedish geologist, was visiting a village 55 kilometers southwest of Beijing, Zokurien. A local resident approached him and took him to see that it was a cave full of dragon bones, which Anderson recognized as cranial fossils of early men. Further studies were made and the fossil cranial remains were said to be 500,000 years old. It was indeed a revolutionary discovery that offered a fresh insight into the history of archaic men. In 1941, during the onset of World War II, the fossils were confiscated by the U.S. forces and were intended to be shipped to the New York Museum of Natural History. On that day, the fossilized remains just mysteriously vanished. In 1972, a reward of $5,000 was offered to those who can point the location or bring the remains. A woman called and demanded to receive $500,000 instead. However, after the first call, the woman also vanished without a trace. Some say that the disappearance of the remains was intentional, while others believe it couldn't be. Speculations also about the bones being crushed up and was used in Chinese medicine came up, but it wasn't proven. It was indeed a great discovery of natural treasure, but since it was lost, it was never again found. At number 5, the Maharaja Splurge, Patiala Necklace. In 1928, the ruler of the rich state of Pariyala, Maharaja Sir Bhupinder Singh, hired Cartier, a famous jewel company in France, to make him a necklace. Cartier happily obliged to his request and made a luxurious display of wealth for the Maharaja, and he was mind-numbingly rich. The piece of jewelry that Cartier made for the Maharaja contained many precious Burmese rubies and contained a whopping 2,930 diamonds. The crowning piece of the set was the De Beers, a 234-carat diamond, which at the time was the largest diamond on the planet. The Maharaja died in 1938 and the luxury necklace disappeared in 1948. Although the De Beers diamond was found at the Sotheby's auction in Geneva, in 1998, the other parts of the jewelry were found at a second-hand jewelry shop in London. However, the rest of the rubies and the diamonds are still missing treasures unable to complete the set. At number 4, The Vanishing Chamber, The Amber Room There is a saying that war creates mysteries, and during World War II, there are actually mysterious activities that happened. Even an entire room can just vanish, just like that. The Amber Room was created by skilled German artisans in the early 18th century. The Amber Room, also as known as the Chamber, was a gift from Friedrich Wilhelm, the King of Prussia, to his ally Tsar Peter the Great. The room was thoroughly decorated with gold leaf and panels were made from amber and was installed in the summer residence of the Tsar at Catherine Place. During the Second World War, the Army Group North, under the command of Wilhelm Ritter von Lied, removed the treasures from the town. 
the Germans dismantled the Amber Room under expert supervision in just 36 hours and transported to Kaliningrad, which was previously known as Konigsberg. The treasures remained in Konigsberg in 1945 but is nowhere to be found after the date. At number 3, Tucker's Cross. Tucker's Cross was found by a treasure hunter and marine explorer, Teddy Tucker, in 1955 while searching in Bermuda. Although Tucker was able to get into a shipwreck, a 22 karat gold with emeralds is the only most valuable object he recovered. He thought it was probably the remains of a Spanish galleon, San Pedro, that sunk in 1594. The Aquarium Museum of Bermuda was the one that housed the gold cross, but it was in 1975 when the people at the museum discovered the cross was stolen. For how long? They didn't know. In place of the real golden cross was a plastic replica. In a Bondesk turn of events, the valuable item just vanished without a trace and never found again. At number 2, the missing royal casket. When you think of caskets, you think of dead bodies, right? But this casket is different from the ones that you bury on the ground. Princess Isabella Zartoriska in 1800s had requested for his royal casket to be made. She filled it with artifacts including jewels worn by royalties like the kings of Poland, for example, and some works of art and other mementos. Since Poland ceased to exist as an independent state in 1800s and is divided into different powers of the region, the royal casket eventually fell victim to another group of invaders. Nazi Germany got a hold of the casket in September of 1939, however, they claimed that only the casket remained and the treasures it contained were lost. There have been different theories about how the treasures were lost but still, nothing from the treasure chest turned up. At number 1, Love's Labors One. William Shakespeare is an English actor, playwright, and poet. If you haven't been living under a rock, you might know a piece of information or two about him. Romeo and Juliet and Hamlet are just two of his famous work. But did you know that Shakespeare wrote another play titled Love's Labor's One? Some scholars have said that it may have been a sequel to a comedy play, Love's Labor's Lost, written by the same author, Shakespeare in the 1590s. There were documents from the 1590s and 1600s that indicates the Love's Labor's One was published in 1598 and was still sold until 1603. However, there were no surviving copies of the play that were found. But in the republished edition of Love's Labor's Lost, an English professor at Boston University, William Carroll, wrote in the preface of Love's Labor's One. Some scholars have theories that Love's Labor's One is another term for another play written by Shakespeare entitled Much Ado About Nothing. Although the play was retitled to Love's Labor's One, there are still no enough pieces of evidence to prove that it was the missing play given that there were no copies of the play ever existed after it was sold. Intriguing, right? So, do you agree on our list today? Do you know lost treasure stories? Let us know by leaving a comment below. Alright, that is it for our list today. I would love it if you would be able to subscribe to our channel and hit like. We would also appreciate it if you would be able to share our content with your friends. We upload new and informative contents every day so you can click the notification bell for you to get updates once a new video is ready for you. So, do you like our list for today? What type of top 10s would you like to see next? Feel free to comment below. Again, this is Jane Lee and see you next time.